awarded nine Emmys, including the 2005 New York Emmy for Outstanding Crime Reporting Programming. Controversial plea deal with the St. Paul arson, or trying to keep up with the rise in violent crime. Paula Dow is on the front line in what may be the state's toughest job in law enforcement. The Essex County prosecutor, our only guest on this edition of Due Process. Major funding for Due Process provided by the New Jersey State Bar Foundation committed to educating the public about the law and by the Fund for New Jersey, supporting informed citizens for an effective democracy. Additional funding provided by Lawyer's Diary and Manual and online legal reference, elaw.com. Explain that there has been a, a, a 
obvious to us that they did not die. And yet he dies. And yet he dies. And he's got all of us out here. And he seems to be getting more stronger. Well, with God's counsel, he can get even into a better job than what we're doing. I believe, and I'm sure you would believe as well, that there's a great deal of change that might not happen in the next two or three years. And I dare say that if we keep on carrying this and and it and we keep serving and cooperate, that means that going in on at every at all levels of law enforcement, at, at various levels of the politicians, the government interests, and in the BG business, that we're going to see more turn the corner and we won't be saying that 10 years ago. Yeah, so, so you know, so I'm assuming that what you're going to do is that you and company are going to mention that there are many issues that the courts are going to have some issues with the way they are. That's right. You know, but, but, but the question is, it's the prosecutor's office that you need the office to be some kind, sort of thing, you know, and this is, as I said, he's so articulate and strong in the court that he can get by because yeah. they have been extraordinary people for him. It's another department that they have to deal with that they have a strong commitment to. Yeah. So what's, what's the thing that is going to be the breaking point? Well, we expect there will always be a new social or organizing opportunity. I, I know we can never compete in that role. But if you're going to look at it from the, uh, the BG office as a whole, how can a person go from there to the legal department and then start to be able to see how they can do that? I'm not sure that would be the case. You know, it's a really big stretch. Oh, it certainly is. For example, we came out uh, just uh, in December of the year the year 05, the end of year four. We were always doing one year late and we were very busy with our cases. And if you look back on that, you'll see a series of initiatives that have been brought through over a series of years and we're continuing them and refining them. And they show the, the, the great work of law enforcement and its interactions with um, the, the various other elements that we have to keep shape and roll in the BG building. The uh, religious beliefs, the indigenous, the schools, and and the um, the mayor, um, the, the latest mayor on the on the on the case. Uh, we all interact and have proven that we overlap intentionally. So I I um, regularly communicate just with the Closely with my police sheriff, and all these are avenues that we intersect and carry on our own. Our sole responsibility to, to make it better in each other. So I think that we will be able to keep up. One thing that is clearly a responsibility is the prosecutor. I mean, Tom Sachs is right there, and you know that there will be lots of money and the motivation is the essence of what you do on a day-to-day basis. Are you making a difference? I know that one of the priorities that you had coming into the office, are you starting to pay more attention? I think so. Um, a number of positive things have happened, and, and I, I agree with that. I will tell you that it continues to be a great challenge that we need to attack and, and do a better job. But I'm really pleased to see the progress that I've seen thus far, and, I, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, and, and let me mention a few things. This office and the department, office and district there in the took over to help me in 03. Um, the assistant prosecutors and investigative staff were just pouring out the doors at the end of the end of the day. And that tide of, of, of um, staff came and drove her out. Right, yeah. right. It was, that was turned around significantly. Now, it did, it did where it should be. Absolutely not. Um, even now, even though we are by necessity handling the, the highest amount of violent crime and crime in the state in the year of 2000. If you look at the assistant prosecutors, I believe we ranked 17 uh, out of 21 counties in the case score. So there's room for improvement. But I can certainly say with pride that they are no longer running out the doors to go elsewhere. I will also say that I do think that we still have some of the most skilled um, uh, prosecutors and detective staff that we've committed um, to doing a, a great job. We have each year opened up a, a phenomenal crime scene unit to address a unique flow um, of in, in, in one, attack. One of the areas that, that is obviously the biggest. That's right. And the, the county executive and each of the uh, work hand in hand with us to, to get a state of the art $2.5 million investment, complete amount of investment into um, the crime scene unit. And I'm, I'm really proud to say that we all make a difference in that year of 2000. Did you also get the donations of the mayor? Because we've got to change what we see what's going on, as well as personnel 
problems that exist in the in the past. You know, and, and, and if you have a specific goal that you can work that you have mastered a goal that you can develop a specific goal for that specific thing, and you suggest that you shift people to work with it, other people might say, Well, hey, you might be able to do that, but you haven't worked with it. You know, maybe you say you can blend the city with this larger strategy of addressing the cause of the people that are crying are the sudden pandemic.
could back up to one in, in different ways, perhaps. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah. That's what we need to talk about today. And like you said, the pieces of those things are going to be in the thing. Well, let's give a quick example. When we go through the medical study, we have to find out that we got you from having some of the things that that we need to work on. What are some of the first things that you want us to done with so that we can get the two best outcomes? What is being done? You know, we got to, we've got to begin to make the most out of today. How can we send a message down the road that you are going to, uh, you're not going to be able to watch your bag, your bag of medicine fall on the streets of Essex County and expect that you can pull through. If you remember, uh, if you think back to the accident that there was a man that he, he did everything was denied. He didn't do anything wrong and it's a settlement that he got. And and the reality is that he was a man in the world and we've got to we got to send him down the road. Um, albeit um, one that we can do in the gym as well. We can um, I think that was one of the one of the things we said that we wanted to put is that we wanted to find that we can use a problem and we can admit it to him. That's right. Come to us as kind of part of some of the things that we want to do so that things get done. That's right. So the question becomes how do we think that we're gonna how we're gonna work with people to fact that so we can get them to think why we need to do this kind of thing. Well, I, I, I think that the thing that's the most important is that we're not and that I feel that I'm not one that's going to look at the uh, the decision line uh, where it come from, who you are in terms of um, when you were involved with a client of mine that dealt with a cancer man. I did that there. I've done it here in Providence with the same thing that happened to Mike as well. And I, I, I knew that he would be so willing if it would happen to the same person again. Well, but you know that both of these cases, correctly or not, have a certain order where it's sort of uh, that says some people get treated and others don't. And sometimes it has to do with this and with that. And I wonder where you come down on this argument of what seems, perhaps not in these cases, but in the system at large, to be simply part of even just this influence too often on the class of others. Do you agree? I don't, but I can understand the perception of that. I, and I, I will tell you, one of the problems that we faced here in our focus on the Medicaid issue that you find us frequently here in Essex County prosecuting cases. I will tell you why they didn't get away. The other, there, there are a number of other cases that you're not shown. For example, you're, you're not um, given, given press to the former uh, teacher in uh, Portland, the Columbia High School, uh, who was uh, convicted and uh, sentenced, and he got serious time for inappropriate conduct with a student. Um, you're, you're, you're not looking at the, um, the white collar uh, charges that were brought against uh, a, a senior uh, uh, staff member who was involved in serious <laughs> fraud. Well, anything that comes out of the death penalty has to come from somewhere. So and particularly when you're talking about... Well, I'm about saying that that's what comes out of the death penalty. Well, we're talking about the death penalty. Right. And, and his father often points out, you know, some of the white skin that you're going to have there Surely that's not because no crimes being committed, of course, by young white people. So there is something going on here that seems not to be tied in. I, I certainly think it's a concern that we all have that the Juvenile Justice Commission be participated in and look at the basic concerns of this area. We know we need to be focusing on our area when it comes to children of uh, young men and things that are going on. And the other uh, area of the land that we need to be looking to address is the fact that Look at those same disparities. I'm not comfortable with, with what we see here. I do say that it's not atypical of what we see in, in most neighborhood settings across America. For Philadelphia, New Orleans, that um, overwhelmingly too many of my brethren and sisters and uh, are, are not well, looking at that. Well, that's what we think about in that as much as we have to try to make sure that the outcomes don't become the main focus of the development. societal issues where you know we are focusing on violent crime and who is behind it too frequently um, you're finding that it's it's a, a my, my minority brethren and sister and, and and unfortunately too many african male american male victims of hispanic are the ones that are winding up behind bars 
did have to do something to address it, undoubtedly. And I think I think that there is a wonderful example of both. Look at the people who work in prisons now. And certainly people who are independent living here are taking on one of the most difficult challenges we, we have to take on as prisons.
major funding for due process provided by the New Jersey State Bar Foundation, committed to educating the public about the law, and by the Fund for New Jersey, supporting informed citizens for an effective democracy. Additional funding provided by Lawyer's Diary and Manual and online legal reference, elaw.com.